Kicking it off, we've got the roof coming off of the drawworks in this Starbase summary. What's the Starbase summary? Well, over the last 72 or so hours, we've uploaded about 1.5 terabytes of raw video footage. We've taken the best of that footage and put it together here for you so that we can show it to you, and I'm going to talk about it. Uh, why? Is it fresh footage? Well, we don't make you wait all week. You want to know that this tower crane has been uh, continued to be stacked over at the Gigabay construction site? Well, that's why we do it a couple times a week. We don't make you wait till Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We get this to you as fast as we can. That's what a Starbase summary is. It's the Pad 2 Deluge. You see from the top of Pad 2 there, some uh, blowdown, clean out, pressurization, purging, perhaps. The correct term is what it said on the screen, at least. Over there at Pad 2, as we, we've been watching that come alive. There's the OLM cladding section. We've been seeing this come to pieces. If you watch Starbase Live, you can do that 24-7 over on our YouTube channel. I guess this is the same channel you're watching this. Uh, you've been watching that thing come apart. Here we're putting some scaffolding up. The, uh, <laughs> the little scaffold workers here. See how fast they work at Starbase? This is, this is not real time. I'm not even going to joke like this is real time. Yes, they work quickly. As it turns out, we speed this up so that we can fit it in about 10, 12 minutes for you. <laughs> 1.5 terabytes in about 10 minutes of your time and however many words of my talking. So here, Gage getting some fantastic close-in shots of the demolition work over on Pad 1. I saw some comments down there below. What's happening at Pad 1? Well, they're tearing it down. Why are they tearing it down? They're going to build another one of these here. This is the new Pad 2 design. Much better than that Pad 1 upside-down shower head steel t table tube stool that gets blasted with rocket exhaust every time they lift off. Uh, this pad is their new design. They are tearing down that original design to make room for this design over there at Pad 1. Got some Lox Farm venting over that way. Looks like Caesar caught that one. Every now and then you just see a big plume or something that catches your eye, and you're like, ah, I'm going to grab that. Well, the photographers do that a lot, and then they upload terabytes and terabytes of footage. Luckily, back in Brownsville, we've got a fiber connection, so when they get back in uh, out of Starbase for the day, they plug in and they can upload that. We're not trying to do that over a cellular modem or anything like that, but lots of uh, venting happening. Now, this is weird because these are trees being planted not back at the office building or the production site, but at the launch site. I guess maybe some of the math here. I like how there's a flag person there protecting the thing that's installing the tree. I, I wonder if part of the math was they know that they're not doing a launch anytime soon. And so maybe these trees are going to be able to get established. Maybe some horticulture experts for the RGV will chime in the contents and comments and tell me, is this the season to plant those things in South Texas? I don't know. Um, but interesting that they're sprucing up <laughs> the wall there by adding a shrubbery. <sighs> as long as they're not trying to chop down pad one with a herring. It would take literally forever. Also, it's made of steel. So some more work. They're cutting on those green lines. We've seen on a daily basis the lifts and cranes and everything just working basically nonstop around that OLM. We actually caught this. Uh, Caesar was out for this one, and you see some smoke start to come there. Now, this sort of uh, got to the level, you don't think this is just somebody cutting or anything? You see how there's folks in that safety vest running up the stairs with a fire extinguisher? Um, so maybe, you know, they're cutting in there, they're using those high temperature cutting torches, cutting lances, uh, some old wiring, insulation, something like that, just started to smoke or smolder a little bit, it looks like. And they got in there, got it under control. Does not look like it was a big deal. Um, luckily, a lot of that had already been disassembled, so hopefully the sort of an enclosed space had lots of ventilation. And as we got up in there, we see the crews get it under control pretty quickly. Gage was out there. I think Gage and Caesar and some of the 24-7 cameras got that. But, uh, oh, wow. There you go. Got that under control. 
in any event. That continues over there at the original OLM as they get all the stuff disassembled. They've been being very methodical about it, right? They're going in and they're not going in there with explosives or trying to push this thing over with a bulldozer. Uh, rockets tried 11 times if you don't count the static fires. I don't think a bulldozer would have a lot of uh, success pushing this thing over. But they're being very methodical about how they cut it to pieces and take it apart. It's not drop it into a pile and then push it aside with a bulldozer. It is very sort of cut in this process that they're following. Um, you also see the cranes sort of hook up to the uh, cuts as well. They're not trying to drop them on the ground. God, I love that melting splatter. Like, the rocket couldn't make that stainless steel or that steel do that, but uh, these cutting torches certainly can. Look at how it just, God, it just looks melted. I think we use the lightsaber uh, sort of metaphor. It's not really a metaphor. The lightsaber comparison, I guess, and that really does look like it melted that metal out of the way. They've also been continuing to work on the berm, tearing out the uh, not only the earth and the concrete that makes up the berm, but some of the lines and rebar and stuff like that inside of it. You can see some good shots there of them just getting that out of the way. Again, that pad 2 design has that big flame trench that's actually underground level, right? Oh, we're going to do a nose cone parade. Uh, but they need to get that old berm and stuff out of the way so that they have room to dig that big trench so that they can adequately direct the exhaust gases coming out of the rocket when it launches. We check in on a regular occasion over at the Star Factory. These are the windows of the Star Factory here, and we're looking inside. Ship 41's nose cone, you can see quite a bit of tiling on it as well as the scaffolding so that the workers can get to all the different levels. Back down the road, like if you're looking at Star Factory from the road, this would be far to the right, if I'm not mistaken, because you can see that nose cone was not very finished. It was nice and smooth. And then you go to the left a little bit, and you see this nose cone that has the pins on it, right? And then you get to this nose cone. I don't actually know if this order, if this is continuing down the road, because now this one doesn't have pins. Um, but as they go through the construction line, they're just sort of walking down in order of putting those things together. They have a Star Factory filled with ships ready for 2026. Jump over to Massey's real quick. I uh, haven't seen a lot over there. I think we've seen the cranes doing quite a bit of craning, but the test tanks and stuff have not been testing. I don't think we've seen a lot of vapors or anything like that, although we have seen a couple road closures through there. Here's a bit of a wider shot of the production site. You can see those big tall tower cranes around the Giga Bay. And then we're going to look through the uh, <laughs> yuccas, whatever. There at the launch mounts as well. Here's a close up or closer up shot of the tower cranes. They almost look like not really miniature oil derricks, uh, oil rigs, maybe is what I was looking for there. But they've been putting those things together so that they have that very small footprint, right? Look at the small amount of floor space that the tower crane takes up, but they have that long reach, and with four of them, they can reach all the different parts of the gigabay, and they can work on more than one thing at a time so they can get this thing constructed. Looks like we're looking through that door there over to ship 39 in Megabay 2. Doors open a little bit more. Here, we'll change the exposure a little bit so we can see inside a little bit better, but... Uh, work progressing on that back there in Megabit. You can see, I think that we're looking at mostly tiles there. A little bit tough on the contrast, but bright days out there at Starbase. Here's Orbital Pad 2 again there. You can really see straight through the underside. Flames are going to come right at you and away in that uh, sort of view, or I guess the exhaust would. It's another example of the methodical process of taking apart that OLM. They hook that up to the crane cut it all apart, and then gently put it down on the ground. We're going to do the same thing over here on the other side with another piece of it. And this is actually cool because you can sort of see how that's greebly Star Wars inside, right? It looks like something that a bunch of stormtroopers should run down the hallway, and then they, they actually run past the door because they don't know that the people they were chasing ducked through the... Whatever. You all know how it goes. Look at that. There's a pad to deluge test. We have been looking for these for a while. Not the first one we've seen, but uh, as they bring that system online, it's probably sooner rather than later that they're going to get a rocket out there. I don't know if we are days away from that, but we are likely weeks of, like weeks away from that at this point. Another piece comes flying off of the old LM. You know, they were supposed to cut on the green line. I think they missed a little bit. 
you even have to think about it like when you cut a piece like that you have to hook the crane up to it so that you're you're supporting it on the center of mass or about the center of mass right you don't want to release that last bit of cutting and that whole thing slang sideways because you didn't you didn't sort of predict where the load would be but look at when they fly these things off the sides of the olm how they stay pretty I, I hope this one doesn't end up at a big angle if we see it before the end of the video i was going to say look at how level they end look what a good job they're doing balancing those things here's a weird part that was getting delivered over here, I think it's uh, it's just it was labeled white structure. Caesar got some pictures of the white structure, but it looks like it's in a very finished state, right? It's not raw. It actually looks like it's got I don't know primer or paint or something on it already. So we will watch that and see where that ends up over on the launch pad. For now, we're gonna look at a bunch of cyber trucks. It's Cyber Bob's used cyber truck yard out in front of the Starbase sign there. Looking back into the arm as well, this is pad 2, QD arm for the ship. Pad 2 is QD arm for the ship. Uh, continuing to work on that back here. But I think this is another piece we're going to see coming out to pad 2 in the not-so-distant future. You know the, the drill? We're going to watch for those scaffolds to start to come down. When that thing's going to move, we expect a bunch of the scaffolds to disappear. They sort of clean out around it, and that's how we sort of guess when we want to share that with you live as it rolls by. There's that transfer tube install jig again. We saw this previously. And shout out to the teams I actually saw down in the comments. Some of the folks inside potentially the Star Factory. Uh, Y'all do deserve a shout out. You got to have the fixtures. You got to have the equipment that lets you build the equipment that lets you build the machine that you're going to fly into space. And a lot of times people don't realize how much work and planning and design goes into those sorts of fixtures and, and temporary holds and jigs and all that sort of stuff. We do have some fantastic nighttime spark shots here as well. Like, it's it's one of the last showers of flames coming from the old LM here, sort of marking its uh, the end of its service life. Is it sad that it's getting torn down? I mean, I don't know what else you would do with it. It's a huge building, basically, except it's probably way heavier than most commercial buildings, like an office building of a similar size. I would imagine this is way heavier than that. So it's not like you're going to put it in a museum in Brownsville or something. There's not really a way to do that. I wish they would make coins or slivers or something like that out of it and sell them to SpaceX fans, but, uh, you know, I haven't heard any word that that's supposed to happen. But eh, I guess they're too busy to worry about stuff like that. In any event, folks, it's a Starbase summary. We do it a couple times a week to get you fresh views of what's happening at Starbase. Remember, you can follow us over on social media. Watch us 24-7. If you want the full analysis, check us out on Fridays for This Week in Space Flight. We talk about all sorts of space news, not just Starbase. And on Mondays, we do Starbase Update, where we do a full analysis of what's happening in these videos. But for now, appreciate y'all watching, and we will catch you nerds later.